Καλησπέρα σας κυρίες και κύριοι, αγαπητοί φίλοι, συνάδελφοι και φοιτητές. Είμαι η Βόνα Βέσκοτ, διευθύντρια της Αμερικανικής Σχολής Κλασικών Σπουδών στην Αθήνα. Και με χαρά σας καλωσορίζω εδώ απόψε για την πρώτη μας διάλεξη την Κρονιάς, για την κλασική αρχαιολογία και την ιστορία της τέχνης. Επίσης, θα ήθελα να καλωσορίσω όσους μας παρακολουθούν διαδικτυακά. Ο μιλητής μας απόψε είναι ο διεκακρομένος αρχαιολόγος Γκόρκεμ Κόκτεμιρ του Πανεπιστημίου της Αγγυράς. Συνάντησα για πρώτη φορά τον δόκτωρα Κόκτεμιρ όταν έγινα μέλος του προγράμματος Getty Connecting Art Histories Beyond the Northern Aegean, το οποίο συγκέντρωσε μελετητές από πολλές χώρες για να μελετήσουν την επίδραση της αρχαίας ελληνικής αρχιτεκτονικής σε περιοχές πέρα από το Αιγαίο. Τώρα είναι διευθυντής της ανασκευής μιας από τις σημαντικότερες κλασικές θέσεις στην Ανατολία, της Μαγνησίας στον Πάτομο Μέανδρο. Αυτή η αρχαία ελληνική πόλη είχα δύο σημαντικές λατρείες, η μία αφιερωμένη στην Αρτεμίδα Λευκοφρίνη και η άλλη στον Δία Σωσίπολη, ή τον Δία Σωτήρας της πόλης. Ο δόκτωρ Κόκτεμιρ ξεκίνησε προσφάτα μια νέα έρευνα του Ναού του Δία, ο οποίος είναι πολύ σημαντικός για την κατανόηση της εξέλισης του ελληνικιστικού αρχιτεκτονικού σχεδιασμού. Απόψε το βράδυ θα μοιραστεί μαζί μας τις ιδέες του για αυτόν τον ναό και την λατρεία του. Good evening, friends, colleagues, and students. I am Bonna Westcote, Director of the American School of Classical Studies at Athens, and it is my pleasure to welcome you here tonight for our first lecture of the year on classical archaeology and art history. I also welcome those of you who are following us online. Our speaker this evening is the distinguished archaeologist Gorkum Kokdemir of the University of Ankara. I first met Dr. Kokdemir when he became a founding member of the Getty Connecting Art Histories uh, program beyond the Northern Aegean, which brought scholars from many countries together to study the impact of ancient Greek architecture in areas beyond the Aegean. He is now the director of one of the most important classical sites in Anatolia, Magnesia on the Meander. This ancient Greek polis has two important cults, one dedicated to Artemis Lucifraini and the other to Zeus Sosipolos, or savior of the city. Dr. Kokdemir has recently launched a reinvestigation of the Zeus temple, which is a very important place in our understanding of high Hellenistic architectural design. For this project, he was awarded a Colson Cross, a fellowship to come here to the American School last year. It is therefore a great pleasure that I ask you to welcome Professor Kokdemir to speak to us this evening on the cult of Zeus Sosipolis and its temple at Magnesia. Yes. Good evening, ladies and, and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank so much uh, to Professor Bona Westcote, the Director of American School of Classical Studies in Athens for this organization and this lecture. It's a great honor for me to share with uh, all of you the research of excavations in Magnesia since 2021. I also thank to the American Research Institute in Turkey. The Institute awarded my project. The name is Cult of the Sosipolis in Magnesia on the Meander and the Architecture of Hellenistic Temple 
with Coulson Tony Cross Asian Exchange Fellowship. I could have worked on my subject to evaluate both the cult of Zeus and its example in Greece in 2023. I would like also, thanks to the Minister of Culture and Tourism in Turkey, to give permission and support me, researchers in Magnesia, on behalf of my university, Ankara University. Magnesia on the Meander is located in modern village Tekin, Germanic province of Aydın State in Turkey. The ancient city within 120 kilometers of approximate distance from the modern city of Izmir, 25 kilometers from Aydın Kuşadası, 20 kilometers from Aydın Selçuk, the ancient city Ephesus, and also 15 kilometers from Aydın Söke. It is quite difficult to abbreviate the importance of the city of Magnesia or to relate its historical significance with one or two photos or paragraphs, but uh, I will try to do that. However, the exceptional location of the city from its establishment around the years of 400 and 350 BC until the end of the Roman Imperial period on the intersection of a web of roads leading to ancient harbors of Meander reveals the significance of the city at first glance. Magnesians who participate in the Trojan Wars with 40 ships from the Thessalia region as an ally of Ahans went to the island of Crete with a ship after 10 years of war with the survivors. They continued continue, continue to live on the island uh, for 80 years, about three generations, as relatives with the Cretan people. Later with the Oracle of Apollon, they came to a region in Anatolia and near Ephesus under the leadership of Lucian Leikippos, the grandson of Glaucus, who was the leader of Lucian, allies of Troy against the Ahanians in the Trojan Wars. Under the leadership of Leikippos, they established a new city with Lake of Fure, the daughter of Mandrolitos, who was the king of the local people who lived in the region before. They had chosen Anatolian Artemis as the chef goddess for the city. The people of the city also added the name Lake of Furene to Artemis as an epithet. In the work of re renowned thinker Plato, the laws Magnesia, which is described as a city to be newly built, is, a, is given as an ideal exemplification in the chapters regarding ideal city planning and ideal city state management. Famed Adm Admiral Themistocles, who was exiled from Athens for being a supposed supporter of Persians, came to Anatolia and chose the city of Magnesia to continue with his life and perhaps to continue with his politics. It is highly probable that the Macedonian kingdom and the uh, uh, king uh, toward Alexander supported the establishment of Magnesia in its current location during the fourth century B to assure the safety of Meander Valley in Anatolia. The third biggest uh, Ionic temple built for Artemis in Anatolia, which is the masterpiece of an architect, First century BC Hermogenes and praise in the book of famed Roman architect Vitruvius is also located in Magnesia. One of the most well preserved stadiums of ancient Mediterranean built to be used during the competitions and games, which were probably held in festivals brought to the goddess Artemis, is in Magnesia. Also built to be used. While preparing for and after this competition, two of the most well-preserved gymnasium bath complexes are in Magnesia. By the ideal city concept of Plato, which emphasizes music and musicians, the city of Magnesia produced renowned musicians and athletes of antiquity, while also calling attention to itself with cults and ancient religion. As Plato emphasizes, Magnesia was divided into 12 neighborhoods and was devoted to 12 gods and goddesses. 
As an indicator of this characteristic, inside the sanctuary of Artemis, a monumental altar devoted to 12 gods and goddess was built. By the exceptional characteristic of magnesia based on religion, individual, individual sanctuaries and temples were also built for many gods and goddess other than Artemis, such as Zeus, Athena, Apollon, Dionysus, and Serapis, who signifies one of the most important mystery skills of ancient Egypt, as you know. The importance of magnesia for Christianity, which housed a significant Christian population other than ancient religions and cults during the Roman Empire period, is revealed through the mention of the city in St. Ignatius' letters during the Roman uh, period. It is known that researchers and travelers coming from Europe conducted research on the city and remains around during the 18th and 19th centuries, just like they had done in other cities in Western Anatolia. These studies and research campaigns originally began almost 300 years ago in 1720. Magnesia was studied between 1720 and 1723 by Dutch travelers Hyman and Egmont, and between uh, 1736 and 1740 by the English uh, Bishop Poco, and in 1764 by the uh, antiquarians Chandler, Nicholas Revet, and William Pars on behalf of the English Society of Dilettanti. All of these archaeologists conducted the first research concerning the problem of locating the famous city during their Anatolian journeys. Those study tours that took place in the 18th century were the first of their kind. The exact, exact location of the ancient, ancient city of Magnesia uh, was only later pinpointed by William Richard Hamilton and William Martin Lake through their respective studies of the city at the beginning of the 19th century. At the beginning of the 19th century, Hamilton and Lake put forward the idea that the ancient city of Magnesia was to be found in a bazaar. When this claim gained acceptance, the Society of Dilettanti put together a team of three individuals consisting of archaeologists William Gell, architect John Peter Gandhi, and architect Francis Batford to conduct further research in Magnesia put, a, put on a bigger scale. This team arrived at Magnesia in the summer of 1812 and worked especially on the Temple of Artemis, completing the first round of excavations in the city. <clears throat> Between the initial excavations of Society de Letanti in 1812 and the second period of excavations that the French government supported in 1842, many researchers went to Magnesia and added this important city to their own list of studies. In 1817, a French team led by Forby, in 1820, French architects Huyo, in 1822, English uh, uh, architect Lewis Willimi, in 1824 English Francis Iago Ariandel, in 1830 French historians Michaud and Pojo, and in 1836 English scientists who uh, Edwin Stringland and William Jardin toured the Magnesia remains in the area of so-called in Turkish Ine Bazar at time and told their impressions of the city in their works. These important researchers from different nations also, uh, sorry, all focused on the Temple of Artemis, which is the magnum opus of the famous architect Hermogenes. Many of them spoke highly of the phrases of the temple in question. It is also those phrases which depict the struggle between the Greeks and Amazons that led to the French excavation in 18. 42. In 1842, French government chose Texier, who had worked in Magnesia 
in the 1830s to lead the team that would instate second period of excavations in the Temple of Artemis. Texier traveled to Anatolia with the architect, architect Clerget and the painter Boulange. You know, order for the voyage of Texier and his team from Izmir to Denizli, including Magnesia, to be paid, their needs compensated and required security measures taken when necessary. They asked for the proper permissions from the Ottoman government, and it was ensured that the local authorities knew of the arrangement. arrangements. Texier and his team began the excavations at Magnesia in September 1842. They focused on the Temple of Artemis and derived a lot from their studies of previous research to reveal the freezes of the temple. After a period of two months, they stopped their work due to the health problems that arose in the area. At the end of this research, they had revealed over 40 pieces with a log total length of 70, 80 meters belong to the Temple of Artemis Peristasis, uh, a complete frieze block, some architectural elements of the temple, and uh, two inscriptions. All of these were dug up, but uh, put aboard the ship uh, and sent from Kushilas uh, to Paris, 1843. On July, on the 2nd July, 1887, two young German researchers, Winter and Yuda, made a short trip to Magnesia. During this trip, they located five phase blocks that belonged to the temple. They also saw that around the temple, some Turkish workers had broken the stones of the temple. The researchers related this information to Karl Hohmann, who had gained fame through his Pergamon excavations and with whom they had worked in Hieropolis. Considering their advice, Human told the Ottoman government of the issue, and after a very short while, they went to Magnesia with the Aydin uh, City Imperial Museum deputy director, Demosthenes Baltatsi. Apart from the five phase blocks, blocks that Yudo and Winter had reported, they revived six more freeze blocks, uh, making 11 in total. Demosthenes Baltasi, who became the Aydan City Imperial Museum Deputy Director in 1890, worked on behalf of the Imperial Museum at the Temple of Artemis and then continued the fourth period of excavations in the city uh, theater. After he completed his task, he took on the duty of transferring a group of pieces he found in the theater and the temple friezes that were found in 1887 to the Istanbul Imperial Museum. While Bal Baltaxi was uh, thus occupied, he stayed in innumerable times to many centers to the Imperial Museum and to Osman Amdi Bey that he would like to carry on with the excav excavation. But the answer is no. And uh, after uh, the excavations of uh, Baltaxi, the fifth excavation start. In Magnesia between 1890 and 1893, under the name of fifth excavations uh, started. A large part of findings was later sent to the museum in Berlin in this period. Karl Hohmann, who was appointed as the Athens secretary of the German Archaeological Institute, went to Magnesia with Otto Kern. The temple and its surroundings area which was a marshland at the time, was purged of water and research and the temple was inundated. In the same year, Getringen, who went to the Magnesia with Human, carried out a self-funded excavation in Magnesia Theater that had been in Italy excavated by Baltasse. He made an astounding work. It was in Italy thought that this project would be completed no sooner than the one-year working permit issued by the Ottoman government, but due to the excessive heat, the excavation was ended, thus amounting to the nine months and 24 days in total. Human and Kern team up with the architect Rudolf Heine to make use of 
his drawing skills and having sufficient fine fundings state that they wanted to extend the excavation on behalf of the Berlin National Museum. They declared that they had two months and six days left from their previous permit and asked for a permit for another year of excavation. Despite some bureaucratic difficulties concerning the permit, the team led by Human began their work on 1892 with their extended excavation permit. After the excavation, following the uh, sharing of the artifacts, 49 boxes of statues, artifacts, and the other findings, and 13 boxes of architectural blocks were, were to deliver to Istanbul, and one box to Izmir. In return for this, the Berlin Museum would be granted 27 boxes of artifacts. In addition to artifacts that they had been granted, the German government was permitted to take 36 boxes that were full of inscriptions found in Magnesia under the condition that they will be returned after they have been molded to the museum in Berlin. After the excavation by Karl Hohmann, Magnesia was abandoned once again to its destiny for almost a century, covered up with silt and herbs. In 1984, the silence was broken and under the director of the Minister of Culture and Tourism, assigned Professor Dr. Orhan Bingöl from the Department of Classical Archaeology at Ankara University, uh, Faculty of Languages, History and Geography, to run the systemic, systematic excavation again. During the excavation held between the 1984 and 2020 by Professor uh, Dr. Orhan Bingöl, the excavations on the Market Basilica, the Propylion of Agora, Teatron were finished. At the city gymnasium and Lethaus gymnasium were also partly excavated during his period. The main complex of the city, Artemision and Stadion, were the biggest research projects of Professor Bingöl for ap approximately 35 years. At the end of the 19th century, during the excavation carried out under the direction of Karl Hohmann on behalf of German government, very important findings were discovered in the Agora as a result of the works carried out at least partly to determine the boundaries of the building complex. However, the areas opened after these excavations were filled with a silt layer again in a short time after the excavations, and until today, they have been completely closed under three and four meter shot will cover. When the reports, drawings, and photographs of the works carried out between 1891 and 1893 are examined, it can be seen that the works in Agora were carried out in some very limited parts of the building. The most important results of the, uh, of the work we envisage to be carried out in the Agora is that the ruins of Temple of Zeus, which was unearthed by the German team along with the Kropidoma borders, whose existence is now in the building complex, will be brought to light again. Following the excavations, a large part of superstructure of the temple was found preserved in situ, as seen in photographs from the archives of the Royal German Museum. In the years 1891 and 1893, the bulk of the work carried out by the German team in the Agora was the sought western corner of Agora, outside the narrow area where the temple Zeus was located. As a result of these studies, a fountain building, a small section of South Propylon, and the South Stoa in the southern part, and limited parts, but not all, uh, of some of structures behind were unearthed. In the Western Star and Northern Star, only five and seven of the rooms out of a total of over 50 for the Northern and Western Stars were opened along with the work done in a narrow area, which is understood to have been done for the purpose of determining the 
borders of Agora. However, even in the open areas, it is noteworthy that the architectural remains of the building complex were unearthed in some places, standing in situ at the height of two and three meters, with many architectural elements in a collapsed position around it. Although it was worked in such a limited area and in a limited time, a total of approximately 100 inscriptions and nearly 20 marble studies and fragments were found as a result of studies carried out, to the, carried out under the direction of Karl Hohmann in 19th century. You can see the uh, statue, statues which was found by German archaeologists in the excavation of Agora in 19th century. <clears throat> Considering the situation of findings in the Agora, which is located on the area of approximately 25,000 uh, meters square, only uh, one, one part of which was opened in the 19th century, it is undoubtedly obvious how important the new scientific results and findings to be revealed after the studies will carry out can be. For these reasons, Agora of the ancient city was chosen as the most important work area of our team within the 10-year plan. And we determined the Temple of Zeus, which is the most important structure in the history of Hellenistic architecture, and, it is, and is thought to be older than the Artemis cult of Magnesia, as our first study area. We started ex excavation in Agora at the end of the year of 2021. At the end of the 20 2021, our excavation in the section where the temple is located developed in an area of 20 meters and 10 meters. As a result of these studies, we rediscovered, of, uh, we, we re, we rediscovered half of the nows together with the pronouns of the temple located in the west direction. In, this uh, in the 2022 season, Excavations continued at the Temple of Zeus as a result of these studies. All the ruins of temple were unearthed in the area of 20 meters and 35 meters. The evaluations we made very, were very exciting at first. For the first time after the 19th century, the magnificent temple was in front of us again with all its ruins. After architectural documenting and drawing the findings of architectural remains, the result made us even more excited because more than 600 marble architectural blocks belong, belonging to the temple were found. And in addition, all small broken fragments were found also within the excavation area. You can easily see from the photo the piles where we collected the small marble fragments. In 2022, during the same season, after the excavations, the architectural blocks were documented and stacked in a nearby area in the Agora to the south of the temple for other works to be carried out. And in a very short period of the time that year, we saw that we had the Temple of Zeus, perhaps Hermogenes, apprenticeship work and considered one of the most important structure in the history of Greek architecture with 75% of its pieces. As you all know, after the Humans excavations, some architectural blocks of the Temple of Zeus were taken to Berlin. And so far, the Prostilos facade of the temple has been exhibited in Berlin using a small number of original architectural elements together with mostly imitation parts. Our findings from the facades definitely revealed that both facades and even the cella walls could be rebuilt in situ with a restoration work to be carried out in Magnesia. 
We continued excavations around the Temple of Zeus in 2023 also. Today, the size of the excavation has reached 45 meters by 35 meters around the temple. This year's studies have revealed very important results regarding the cult practices and phases of the temple. Before focusing to these results, I would like to give information about the Magnesia Zeus cult and it is epithet Sosi Polis or City Savior. In 19th century, excavation of Zeus discovered statued fragments other than the ruins of the temple. These fragments were also taken to Berlin in 19th century. Judging from, two, from the two large body parts and the head fragments, and the height of the head with two paces is 43, uh, sorry, 53 centimeters, it is clear that the cult statute of the, tem of the Temple of Zeus is a monumental seated statute of Zeus, reminiscent of the example which made by Phidias for the temple in Olympia. Although there are many traces of repair on it, it should be accepted that the statute is a seated Zeus type from the Hellenistic phase of the temple. The seated Zeus cult statute, which we can see on the reverse side of the coins of Macedonian period or the Hellenistic kingdoms, was also used in the Magnesia means of the Roman period on a small number of examples. Zeus cult is acceptable for the temples with its cult statute, but the epithet Sosipolis or the cult of Sosipolis, we will focus it now with the other evidence. <clears throat> As you know, the only information about the cult of Zeus in Magnesia among the ancient sources is the text of Strabo. As for Anexanor, the guitar uh, uh, player, the theaters exalted him, but Antony exalted him all he possibly could. Further, his native land greatly increased his honors, having clad him in purple as consecrated to Zeus Sosipolis, city savior, as is plainly indicated in his painted image in the marketplace. And we have only one inscription about the cult of Zeus, which you can see on the slide on the right part. It was discovered by German uh, archaeologists in 19th century. They carried out the inscription also to Berlin. We understand from their information that the inscription was engraved on the antablog of the temple. The first part of the inscription is associated with the bull presentation to Zeus, which will take place this year. In this part of the inscription, Zeus is not mentioned with the epithet Sosipolis. The second part is related to the big organization to be held in connection with the cult of Artemis Leucophrene and the practices to be carried out for 12 gods, Artemis and Apollon and Zeus Sosipolis are mentioned. The inscription was dated to the Hellenistic period, but apart from the inscription, Zeus and especially Sosipolis are not mentioned in over 200 inscriptions found in Magnesia. Was the epithet Sosipolis a standalone adjective added to Zeus, reflecting the meaning of the word city savior? To find the answer, for this question, it is necessary to look at other examples from the Mediterranean world. However, we are not very uh, lucky in this relation because we can find the name of Sosipolis cult in only one city, in Elis, in Greece. This information in Pausanias' text mentions the existence of Sosipolis cult in Elis. His only relationship with Zeus is the existence of the city of Olympia. 
Apart from that, the Sosipolis cult in Elis has no relation with Zeus. Apart from the single information in ancient sources related to Sosipolis cult, epigraphic sources show the existence of this cult in other city, city of Ephesus in Anatolia. The inscription is dated to 120 AD. It is clear that during the Roman period, an altar of Sosipolis was erected from the, was erected, uh, we can understand from the inscriptions. But cult of Zeus Sosipolis in Ephesus worshipped as a Sopolis, not Sosipolis. In a group of inscriptions found inside and in front of the Puritanion, the chef administrations of the city offered their graduate to Hestia Bulaya, the chef god and protector of Puritanion, and some other gods. In two inscriptions, Theosopolis is included among these gods. Nibe emphasizes that in the second and third century ADs, centuries AD, trust in the traditional gods decreased and they were replaced by Sosipolis or Sopolis who protected the survival of the city as well as others. These examples in Ephesus are dated to 3rd century AD, like Elis during the Roman period. We can understand from these examples the worshipping of Sosipolis or the name of it in Ephesus are also not related with Zeus, like the city of Elis. If we want to find an answer for this problem, we need to focus again on Magnesia and its history. Magnesia seems to be center of coins minted in the name of Macedonian kingdom in Anatolia. Like the other means in all around the kingdom after Alexandros, we can see the chef god of Alexandros and his kingdom. Zeus, the seated Zeus statue, was depicted in the uh, backside of the Macedonian coins. The most important knowledge that is known or ignored as wrong is the information that Alexandros had no problems during the Persian invasion except for the Persian opposite opposition near Çanakkale, Gronikos and Hatay, uh, Isos in Anatolia. The real one had not been like that, at least it shouldn't for me. According to information we, re we received from Polyenos, before the campaign of Alexandros, the Persian troops under the command of Memnon of Rhodos deployed in Magnesia against the armies sent by Philippos to Western Anatolia. And as a result of a strong resistance, resistance, two armies fought near Magnesia. Memnon had been successful that day. There is one of the concrete events that reveals why Magnesia was actually founded as a city surrounded by walls in that exact region. Another historical event that supports this knowledge also occurred during the campaigns of Alexandros. Arianos of Nicomedia related that Alexandros had to wait while trying to advance with his armies in Ephesus because a protest that will take place in the city of Miletos posed a risk as it did, it, it did to his father. After Magnesia envoys visited him in Ephesus, he sent a large army to the region together with Parmenios, one of his father's commanders, who had struggled Memnon before in Magnesia. With this information, can we say for the best name of the city savior or Sosipolis, maybe Macedonian rulers, kings like Philippos, Alexandros, or the other kings of Hellenistic period, Ptolemaios, Seleucos, Attolos, and the others. The epithet of Sosipolis is used because of the victory of Macedonian kingdom over Persians with the light and help of the god of the gods, main cult of Macedonian Zeus. In 2023, 
An inscription which was erected on the Agora side of the gate between the Agora and the sanctuary of Artemis was found. The text, the text in the inscription are actually very important in terms of emphasizing the importance of the kingdom of Macedonia for Magnesia even during the Roman period. In addition, it refers to Alexandros as a king even during the imperial period and in, it explains the identity of the ambassador sent when Alexandros was in Ephesus and confirms the event which was mentioned in Ariano's text. So what was the situation like for the temple of Zeus in the Roman period? Who were the new saviors of the city or new sociopolis? Or did the temple entirely serve a different cult? As a result of our work, all of the inscriptions, some of which were found and published by Human, were erected on the same axis next to the southern long side of the temple. These inscriptions were engraved on the pedestals supporting the statues of the emperors. And the emperors, whose pictures and names you can see in all the inscriptions, were not erected for, for Zeus, but by the city council, officials, and priests in the name of their emperors. Statute of six emperors who reigned for approximately 250 years. One for Nerva, two for Trians, one for Antonius Pius, one for Lucius Verus, one for Marcus Aurelius, and the last one for Julianus II. Good luck, the city of Magnesians, the godliest, the greatest, the most philanthropic king, the victorious and triumphator and the god lord of all men, the most pious Flavius Claudius Julianus, with good luck. Magnesians honored last pagan emperor Julianus II in 361 and 363. During the 300. 64, after the reign of Julianus' reign, his name was dilated on the pedestal. This year must have been the last year of paganism and the temple. You can see the dilated part of the inscriptions uh, from the photo in the right side of the slide. During the excavations, the discovery of coins from the Constantin Constantine period, although not from the Julian period, on the floors proved that the temple was not used after the second half of 4th century AD. In 2023, we carried out four sondage excavations around the temple. Two of them were to understand how many crepes the temple had. One of these was built in front of the western entrance facade of the temple. And we can understand that the original Crepidoma was covered by the new marble floor. The second was carried out in the north of the temple to understand whether the steps were also made for the long side. As a result of this, as a result of the first study, it was determined that the number of steps given by Human for the facades continued under the uh, existing flooring. It has, it has become certain that the temple was built with a total of four crepes, which were identified on the facade and were not defined by human, defined by human. While the old floor on which the crepidome of the temple was not found in the area, it was understood that the floor had been moved up, cancelling the two steps of the temple. The most important findings of 2023 was the altar of the temple, which was located just to the west of the temple. The entrance direction of the altar facing west, not towards to the temple, has not been known with its architectural details until today. The original steps of the altar, like the temple, were continued under the existing marble flooring. As a result of the excavations, it was definitely proven that a new arrangement was made in the courtyard of the altar after the renovation of the floor. 
Another important excavation of 2023 was the square-shaped section between the temple and the altar, which was not marble floored. The studies carried out in this area revealed a hard mortal layer at the floor level and a burnt layer of approximately 50 centimeters under its filling. Detailed studies carried out within this layer revealed important findings and results. 19 Ungantariums discovered during this sondage, A. And uh, this, uh, it can be included in Hayes' definition of Italian type, these Ungantarium. The next of these specimens, which are generally thin veiled or lined in reddish brown or light red from the mouth to the beginning of the body. The blackness on the surfaces of magnesia samples, similar examples of which were seen until the, uh, until the mid first century AD. The samples in question appear to have been exposed to fire during or after use. Five different vessels apart from Ungantarium were discovered in Sondage A. It is possible to evaluate the containers, uh, containers as two different types. The first type is represented by a single example. As can be seen from the photographs, the example doesn't have a handle. A similar vessel and with a horizontal handle from the Athenian Agora was dated to first half of the first century AD. The other four vessels, which we consider as type, sec, uh, type two, show common form features. As can, we, uh, as can be seen from the images, the specimens with mouth diameters varying between approximately five and 12 centimeters have inverted leaves. It's possible to consider these vessels of which no similar examples have not uh, have yet not been found as special productions to their found context and forms that are not suitable for daily use. Based on the Ungantarium type first ceramics, it is possible to date this form to first half of the first century AD. Additionally, six coins were found with ceramics in Sondage A. The observe of only one of these highly corroded coins can be read. The portrait on the front is reminiscent of the Julian Claudian dynasty portraits and matches the period given for the ceramics. In particular, it can be said that almost all of the bones along with their soft tissue were burned, cooked to moderate or sever degree. Among, the group, among this group of finds, a nearly complete finger bone from a cattle, a mandible fragment from a baby sheep, and a single milk tooth sample from a pig are noteworthy. In, a, in addition to these species, a long bone fragment from a bird and pig's tusk can also be clearly seen. When looking at bones in general, Bone fragments of two pigs, bone fragments of a cattle, a jaw fragment of young sheep, and long bone fragments of an adult small god, goat were identified. All these findings show us that this area was used specially for an offering ceremony in early Roman imperial period. Perhaps this offering was made to celebrate a measure construction activity in which the flooring of Agora was renewed. And this event has been consecrated as a special spot, which is remains and ashes preserved in this area. The area which appears to ha have been used a single occasion from the ceramic repertoire for whatever purpose and was never covered with marble flooring, perhaps offers us a clue for the new usage and the new function of the temple. We can understand with the other findings that the era of early Roman imperial period has a special importance for the temple of Zeus in Magnesia. The block with inscriptions was found inside the cella by Human. It was found by us after the 2022 excavations having been moved to the outside of the cell. The inscriptions, which was engraved on an orthostat block with three parts. 
In the inscription, part of which is written on the left side of the block, the following is written in the proposal of, for completion. Tiberius Claudius Caesar, the savior of the universe, the greatest of the gods, the grandson of God Augustus, the brother of Germanicus Caesar, the nephew of God Tiberius Augustus, the emperor, the consul, the father of the fatherland, under the proconsulship of Paulus, Fabius, Perseus, and blah, blah, we can't read the name, while was the creator of the god Caesar of Augustus, the Philosebostos, Caius Julius Antipatros, from the parish of Fabia, son of Dionysus, erected it. In the inscription, part of which is written on the center of the block, the following is written. Nero Claudius Caesar Drusus, the son of Emperor Tiberius Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus, and Julia Agrippina Augusta, the greatest of the gods. Tiberius Claudius Democrates, son of Democrates, of the parish of Curena, lifelong priest of Germanicus Augustus and tribune of the Twelfth Legion, and Tiberius Claudius Taimon of the parish of Curena, son of Tiberius, his lifelong, his lifelong priest, but appointed high priest of Asia people, erected together. In the inscription, part of which is written on the right side of the block, the following is written in the proposal for competition. Julia Agrippina Augusta, wife of the most illustrious god Tiberius Claudius Germanicus, Tiberius Claudius from Curana district, blah, blah, we can't read the name, son of blah, blah, erected. These inscriptions clearly show us that during the Claudian dynasty, statutes of the god and emperor Claudius and his family were erected, were erected side by side in the temple of Zeus. This inscription also matches the dates of the finds in the offering pit we discovered in Sondage in 2023. In conclusion, the temple of Zeus dating back to the Hellenistic period as Sosipolis was actually a temple commemorated symbolically built in the memory of Macedonian kings who were the greatest protectors and saviors of the city over Persians during the city during its founding. During the early Roman period, because of the old Hellenistic tradition, Zeus, wa Zeus was chosen again as a ruler cult, but the Roman imperial cult, and it served as an imperial cult temple until the middle of the 4th century AD. Thank you very much for your interest. Okay. Well, thank you so very much for a really uh, um, wide ranging and uh, 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 um, informative and, uh, and groundbreaking, literally physically and, uh, uh, and cultically, uh, uh, information about this particular temple, uh, and, in, and especially its, its Roman phases. I'd like at this point to open the floor to questions, uh, both, uh, we'll, we'll start with those in the room and then we can move uh, to those online. Yes. Yeah. We, we, and we have a, a microphone that will come down. Thank you for a very interesting talk. Could you tell us, is there any information about Magnesia from earlier travelers? I noticed that you mentioned... Local. Yes. Uh, I think you asked the uh, uh, information... Uh, Before Pocock. Before Pocock, no, oh, that's no, interesting. because uh, I wrote an article about the uh, research history of Magnesia, 
uh, only uh, at the beginning I found the name Heyman and Pokok. Of course, Pokok is uh, before then Heyman, but uh, before Pokok I can't find anything because the city, the location of the city uh, didn't know at this period. Yes, I was wondering about that because it's, it may not be on a route which normally travelers would follow. Yes, 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 you are right. Right, thank you. You're welcome. We'll let Josh and then we come back. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. So the project that I'm working on right now is actually really similar um, to a lot of the themes you're mentioning um, with the foundation of the cult and its relationship to uh, Hellenistic monarchs and the, the Macedonian kings. Um, I just wanted to offer maybe there's something else um, about the idea of saviorship in this context, and it has to do with the source you showed us about Alexander's institution of democracy in the cities of Asia Minor. And the sources also show, and I'm thinking of a few inscriptions, also Arian, um, that the institution of democracy uh, in those cities at that point was also something which had to be done with insurances against interfactional violence, which could happen um, as, a, uh, as a consequence of that. Um, I think it was an area, I think it's Ephesus or uh, Miletus, where Alexander has to, you know, um, prevent the Democrats from uh, committing retributions against um, the former oligarchs. Um, and there is a um, inscription in Mytilene about um, Zeus, and he's kind of involved in this process as an establisher of homonoia. And that's like an important part of his um, persona. So I'm just wondering if that maybe mm. is interesting. Okay, thank you very much, but it's too difficult question for me because you know that I'm an archaeologist, not historian, but uh, I make a relation with the kingdom of Macedonia, uh, like Alexandros, uh, in my presentation, because uh, we don't have any information about the Palai Magnesia, okay? You know that the ancient uh, Magnesia, the early Magnesia, uh, we get this uh, information from the sources and uh, ancient sources. And they said that uh, the Magnesia was established in 7th century BC or 6th century BC during the democracy or the, uh, during the uh, period of Athens. But uh, I am talking about the second Magnesia. And uh, you ask why you related with uh, Alexandros, I think. Uh, it is normal because they have a war with Persian. And uh, it is not only, it's not uh, only a city for Anatolia for this uh, situation. Also the other cities, for example, in Prene, we can also find an inscription on the temple of uh, Athena, you know that the inscription of Alexandros, then so uh, it is normal for the 4th century BC and the 3rd century BC in Anatolia, okay? Uh, oh, yes, it will do this, and then we'll come back. We will, we will not miss you, but uh, here we go. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, I just have a question about future campaigns and what the plans are for upcoming seasons. <laughs> or, or no, I don't. I don't know. Is that a question to ask? Okay. Um, I, and particularly whether there's going to be any reconstruction that's happening, or if you're yeah recovering. First of all, we will uh, we would like to find the head of statute of Zeus, like some of us. <laughs> No, of course. Uh, now uh, we are uh, making a documentation in uh, Magnesia uh, for the restoration of the temple. Uh, we will start uh, in this month and also in December we will finish the documentation of the architectural uh, members of the temple. I hope 2024 uh, with the support of our government and also with the support of the Minister of uh, culture and tourism in Turkey, uh, we've made the restoration project in Magnesia because 
I showed you know that we found uh, 75 percent of uh, architectural members of the temple. So we should do that. It's a very good number for restoration. Uh, so uh, next year, I hope we will uh, begin to restoration project in Magnesia, in Agora uh, for the Zeus temple. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Dimitris, can we come back to the front here? Because uh, you, you wanted to ask another question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea when the city was abandoned? Yes, after the excavation uh, of Zeus Temple, because we found many uh, evidence for this. Uh, I showed uh, a statue of Julian II. You, uh, you saw it. Uh, I think after the 364, uh, when they deleted the Julian II name on the uh, statute base. There was a big earthquake, uh, and also we know this earthquake because in the history, uh, I forget the uh, real date of the earthquake, but uh, during the 370 in the Asian uh, Sea uh, on the Crete island, and also. Uh, uh, it is related with the, uh, Anatolia and also the Greece. So in this earthquake, uh, Magnesia and all, um, all of the temples, all of the structures of Magnesia uh, was damaged. And uh, in our excavations, during the Professor Bingo's excavations, uh, we can find any findings uh, which was dated to the 5th century or 6th century or 7th century. Uh, there's a big space between the 4th century uh, to 11th century. So I can say that uh, after the 4th century, the city uh, was smaller than the old one. Not completely abundant, of course. Well, let me, let me do a few online and then we'll come back to uh, the audience. The, the questions online center around the architecture of the temple. Uh, and uh, uh, Nancy Serwent asks, could you speak about the materials used for the temple construction as well as for the sculpture? Uh, is it a local stone? And uh, are there sculptural workshops in proximity to the site? Yes, I think the question is about the architectural findings and also the sculptural findings uh, for the temples, isn't it, uh, Bona? Yeah. Yes. Uh, is it is it a, is it a, mar a, a marble? Is it a local marble? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can understand uh, today because we should make an analyze uh, for this because it's too early to say or to give answer for this question. Uh, but we know that for, from the other uh, structures in Magnesia, for example, the Temple of Artemis or the uh, ceremonial gate of Agora, uh, during the uh, Professor Bingo's excavation, uh, we made an analyze and uh, we can understand that these, uh, these marbles are local and we found these marbles near uh, Ephesus, uh, 10 kilometers uh, far from Magnesia. But for, for the Temple of Zeus, it is too early to say that because we need, we should uh, make uh, analyze uh, like the other examples. Okay, thank you. And, and another um, related question about the architectural development from Lex Lage, who says, um, uh, can, you know, it, as these you have these two monuments, one Hellenistic and, and one Roman, and can you, um, uh, do they, um, I was trying to interpret her question, uh, well, in the architectural development of the temple, does it engage the changing shape of the, um, of the Agora or the uh, nearby Artemisia? And so there's, do you see um, similar developments Mm -hmm. happening in the Agora and the, and the Temple of Artemis. Yes, today I am talking about two phases of the temple with uh, using inscriptions information. Uh, and also, uh, it's too early to say that we can see the same 
phases in the architecture of the temple. Uh, now we are uh, studying on this problem and also uh, we will see that. But I have opinion, of course. If uh, the temple is dedicated to imperial cult during the Roman period, and also the floor of the Agora uh, was renewed in the Claudian period and also in the early Roman period, and uh, the statutes of uh, Claudian dynasty also added uh, near the uh, cult uh, statute of Zeus, it should be. We should find a uh, second phase of the architecture because I showed uh, the statute of Zeus, you saw it. There are many uh, holes and there are many clues for uh, renovation on his body. So uh, we, we thought that the temple was uh, built in, uh, in the beginning of the uh, 3rd century BC. So 300 years, so uh, it can be, but it's too early to answer this question. We will see. We will see. So you're, 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 I guess this will, my question was, was going to be related to what you, I think you've just answered, which is you suspect that you're going to see um, some, a lot of Roman repairs yes. in, the, in the 600 fragments that you're, you're yes. still documenting. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yes. Excellent. And, um, and so I get, my question was, will you, uh, it does the design change radically, but uh, or even subtly? Uh, For example, uh, I would like to add uh, something. I'm so sorry, uh, Bona. For example, you know the plan of the temple. It is not uh, traditional, you know that. The entrance of the temple, prostitutes, and the uh, other side, the Stilinantis. It is only one example uh, for all Mediterranean region. Uh, there should be a reason for this. Maybe it is too early to say that. Maybe the new uh, design uh, made in the early Roman Imperial period to show the entrance more than the Distillinantis. It can be, mm -hmm. but yeah. too early. Too okay. Early. All right. <laughs> now, now we did have one more question uh, uh, here on the floor. But please, not historical and uh, <laughs> questions, okay? Hello. Hello. Merhaba, yeah. nasılsınız? Oh, okay. Merhaba. <laughs> Selam. Uh, my question is about, um, so when you first excavated and then you did some sondage studies, and then in the sondage studies, we were able to see water beneath. Yes. And also the area was covered with silt. Yes. After the initial excavations. Yeah. So, we speak of a project of, of a restoration, and in this case, how do you deal with this water? It's it's also too early for this, I know. Yes, I can understand your question, but uh, if I have money, I can find a problem for this, of course. <laughs> of course, yes, I am uh, joking, but yes, the uh, water is very important problem uh, for the excavation in Magnesia, because we are near in the near the river of Meander. And also, uh, when we excavate the area, uh, one meter or two, two meter uh, later, we can find the water. Yes, it's a very difficult uh, way for the restoration, but we can find a way because they found a way for uh, built uh, in, during the Roman period or for, during the Hellenic period. Because the water source was the same, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yes. For example, I think uh, the reason of the uh, renovation of the flooring uh, is water. Because they changed the uh, floor uh, height and they uh, changed the floor and they uh, got the floor one meter high. So they had a reason for this. I think the reason is water like today. So we can find a uh, solution for this if we can find money. Thank <laughs> we, we, we do have one more question online from um, Chenez Yener, uh, who says, thank you very much uh, for your impressive work. 
And she asked a specific question, um, which is, uh, uh, can, can you tell from your excavations if the German researchers moved pieces around a lot uh, um, uh, from the photographs and then from what you found? Uh, or was it very much lying the way they, they found it when you excavated? Sorry. Uh... Mona, please, yeah. again, because okay. I, I can understand clearly the question. Right. Well, it's, uh, okay, uh, the question asks, um, do you have a clue uh, mm -hmm. that the German researchers in the first excavations changed the in situ yeah. positions okay. of the blocks or damaged them yeah. from okay. the way that you, you okay. from your excavations can okay. see that? Thank you very much, Mona, for uh, the question. Yes. Uh, we can find the finding position of Karhuman when we excavated the area. Uh, we have two reasons for this, we know that. One reason is uh, after the excavation, the uh, whole area, or not only uh, Zeus Temple, the Temple of Artemis or the other site which uh, was uh, digged by or which was excavated by humans, humans uh, open so uh, during the Ottoman period like today or like the other uh, period uh, the villager or the others uh, took the uh, marbles for their uh, house or for their other structure it is one reason uh, and the second reason we can't understand what I uh, told something about it. Uh, yes, uh, we have photo uh, which was uh, taken by Human, but uh, in his diary he wrote different things uh, than the photos, and he wrote uh, in his diary. He wants. He wanted to find the head of Zeus statue. Maybe the photos uh, were taken before the excavation. Uh, sorry, before uh, they are leaving uh, from Magnesia. After uh, taking photo, after the time of taking photo, they also worked in this area. So uh, we can't find uh, the finding position which we can see the photos of excavation during the human period thank you uh, oh, do we have if we have no other questions at the moment we can go to an informal conversation and a glass of wine downstairs and uh, i ask you to join me in thanking uh, dr koktemir for an excellent presentation okay. thank you Yeah.